Yeah, I know, I know, it's been a while. Almost like two months. I'm not sure if you can tell by looking at me right now, but I'm like 20 pounds lighter than the last time you saw me here on YouTube. And that's definitely not a flex. Like a lot of not so good stuff happened in my life that kind of got me here. And I'll tell you about that at the end of the video because I know a lot of y'all don't care about my personal life. You came for the fashion stuff. So we're gonna start off with sneakers first, all my latest clothing, grooming, and then we'll talk about anime, what projects I have coming up. I have a couple collabs coming up with a couple brands. And then at the very end, I'm gonna go over some of the more personal things I've been going through. Definitely some life-changing events and how that's gonna affect the future of this channel so if you want to stick around for that feel free but no pressure of course I'm just happy to be back and I'm looking forward to showing you all my recent pickups Now starting off with footwear, these first shoes are the New Balance 327s. The entire upper is made of canvas supported by leather and suede on the toe, the lace panels, and the heel. I'm not sure the exact name of this colorway, but I will link it down below where I got them for. They're like less than $100, so very inexpensive shoe for really good looking and once again, something a little bit more unique. You see that really stand out the most when you look at the sole of the shoe and how streamlined and very narrow it is. And as a guy who has flat feet, I wasn't sure exactly how they would fit on me. If you got flat feet like me, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you have a narrow shoe on, especially if it's canvas like this one, you have that spillover that happens on the sole. But with these, it's like they were almost designed to make that not look awkward at all. These are very comfortable. They fit true to size. And for me, they're a 10 out of 10. Next up, we have my black leather Fear of God loafers. Now these Italian made beauties are one of my favorite shoes in my collection because it's like having a dress shoe without having a dress shoe. The cup sole is a semi-translucent gum bottom, and the uppers is very minimal, high quality leather, low profile silhouette that just has this perfect balance between the two, where you can dress it up or dress it down. Now, I didn't feel like going out of my way to moisturize my ankles for this video, but I do have pictures of an outfit I wore with them, just so you can see how they look on foot. Now, these next ones are the Jordan 1 High Mocha, and are actually from our video sponsor, eBay. Now, for me, eBay's been the OG marketplace for shoes since I was in like high school. And now they've made it even safer to shop on a website because now they have authentication. I actually bought these shoes with my own money so I can go through the process and here's how it works. So when you're shopping for a pair, make sure to look for that authenticity guarantee blue check. Then you buy the shoes like you normally would, either place a bid or buy it now like I did. Then the seller ships to eBay first, eBay checks them to make sure they're legit, and then they send it to you so you're protected, nobody can play you, a win-win for everybody. And on top of that, there's no fee for this service, it's completely free. And when you unbox the shoes, you get an authenticity card with a lot of details on it, as well as a tag on the shoe that if you put a smartphone next to it, it'll actually activate a link that you can tap and then look at the exact details of your specific purchase. And they're just putting so many extra layers in there just so we feel safer about shopping on the website. And here's how they look after I lace them up. I see a lot of guys put the black laces in there. For me, I think the off-white looks so much better. I feel like it allows you to wear them in light or dark colors, just like these light gray sweatpants. And these are definitely one of my new favorite shoes to my collection. These next ones are yet another brown shoe, but from a much more underrated brand in my opinion, and that is Saya Collective. These are the Vulture Lows in the Hennessy colorway. I love the gum bottom details. The colorway feels super easy to wear, but the one thing I can't decide is if I should go with the lighter laces or the darker laces. I need y'all to help me decide. Should I go with the chocolate brown or this more so like a wheat color lace? So let me know right now in the comments what y'all think looks better with this shoe. Next up, we have a pair of really expensive sandals by Visvum, and these are called the Cristo. Now, unless you are a part of the Visvum cult fanship like I am, like I've been since I was like 18, then you may not understand why I even spent what I spent on these, and you can look them up. I got a link down below for you. They're comfortable, A1, 10 out of 10. And if you're thinking about sizing on these, I wear an 11 and I got the size large and they fit perfectly, so FYI. This next shoe is a double feature 
feature because they are two of the same model. They're the Destroyer High by Collegian. I feature these guys in my underrated sneakers video that I put out a couple months ago, and these will make my third and fourth pairs of this exact model. They're Italian made, super high quality, and their price point in my opinion is very fair for what they're bringing to the table. You have the black and white pair in smooth leather, a super easy color combo to wear with any outfit. Then the red suede with the vintage shoelaces and the purposely vintage yellow sole. And last but not least, my most recent footwear pickup is the Jordan 1 High Clay Green. They're exactly like the Mochas, except for the brown, they are green in those places. And just like the Sayas, I'm not sure what laces I wanna put with these just yet. So I just kinda have them laced like this until I decide. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments. I'm more than happy for your input. Now, as far as clothing goes, I haven't really gotten a whole bunch of stuff since the last video you saw. I mean, you saw all my pants, you saw a whole bunch of stuff the last video. As a matter of fact, if you haven't seen my latest pickups video from before this one, I will put a card up here just so you can check it out. It's a whole bunch more clothes in there. But for this one, I only got like three things for you. The first one is a Jack and Jones bomber jacket. It's like a very light, dusty olive green. And even though it's kind of a puffer style, it doesn't feel super hot or heavy. Personally, I'm a big fan of the quilted pattern the zipper detail right there on the chest, as well as that oh so soft shirling collar that makes it very appropriate for the fall winter season. Now this All Saints bomber is almost the exact opposite. It's very insulated, very heavy, very warm, and you see the outer shell is smooth and just simple. The details I love the most are the red lining inside, the inner pocket with the snap closure, and there's a little hidden zipper on the left sleeve that you don't even really notice until you get up close to it, and then when you unsnap the left outer pocket, you see this leather strap with the key ring hanging on the end and I'm not sure exactly what it's for but I think it's a cool looking detail and I don't know maybe I'll hang something on it one day and the final pickup for the clothing section is my color block over shirt by Koss y'all know by now this is one of my favorite brands in the whole wide world like half of my closet is Koss and when I saw this on their shop in December I had to get it it's a very subtle color block not too bright but you can definitely see the contrast without looking like oh this guy's trying too hard it's a very medium to light lightweight jacket, but because it is a felted wool, it's still very warm, it still feels very insulated. The only downside with felted wool is just like a tennis ball, it gets very linty quickly. So you gotta just have a lint roller on you before you step out the house and you're golden. Now next up is grooming and self care. Now this is one of my new projects that I have coming up this year. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do like self cut Saturdays or something, but I wanna start learning how to cut my own hair. So I got all the stuff. I have the King C Gillette stuff, which you've already seen before. I got brand new clippers, like barber level clippers. I got shears for like trimming. I even got a straight razor so I can really get my beard perfect and sexy. I'm telling y'all, like the haircut you're seeing right now, it was like half my barber, half me. Okay, I did mess up the first time and I actually made a video about it and I'm gonna post that later But yeah, I'm getting into it. Okay, and just so you know, I practice what I preach I also got that self-cut system that I featured in my gift ideas video from last Christmas So I bought one for myself just so I can try it out and hopefully it works really well for me so I can get all my angles Okay, now moving on to anime I'm super happy that season two is finally out of how I got reincarnated as a slime If you do not know about this anime, you need to watch it right Right now, okay? It's a fantasy based one. It feels like you're in a Zelda video game or watching somebody go through one rather. It's just a very nerdy, lighthearted, fun, but still very much action filled anime. Number two is Attack on Titan. I've definitely been watching that. I'm current right now. And I'm so glad that this season woke up and chose violence. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is probably one of the most well-written animes I have ever seen. I love how they really humanize characters that you may have hated before. This one has just good pacing to it and everything has a payoff. You're like You never wait and aren't satisfied by the time you get to the reveal. It's always a good thing. So yeah, I'm very happy with how this is going so far. I might wait for a few weeks so that episodes drop and I can binge a few. And if you are a fan of Attack on Titan, you wanna watch this other one that I've been watching. This is the third one. It is called Cabanetti of the Iron Fortress or Cabaneri, however you want to pronounce it, but Cabaneri, I believe is how it's pronounced, of the Iron Fortress, okay? So it feels kind of Attack on Titan-ish, except there's zombies and it's a whole thing. So 
If you wanna watch that show, I highly recommend it. Action packed, good character development so far. I definitely give it like a good eight out of 10. It's an easy watch. Okay, now a couple quick announcements on things you should expect this year as far as projects go. I'm collabing with Saya Collective on my own shoe. Yes, I got my own colorway of the Vulture. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen this sneak peek photo already, but this is like a sample pair. It's not even like the exact one, but knowing me as a guy who's in the anime, which person does this remind you of? Probably Goku, correct? Yes, exactly. So that's kind of the direction we're going. That's not the final version, but you kind of getting a feel for where we're going. So I'm very excited. I'm not sure if y'all understand like how excited I am, but I'm really, really excited. Like, trust me, like I went to school for shoe design. So the fact that this is a full circle situation, I'm excited to show y'all what we come up with and uh, hopefully y'all like it. So yeah, that's one thing. Second, I'm considering making, I don't want to call it merch. I feel like merch kind of cheapens it, right? I feel like YouTubers make merch all the time. I want to make something, but I don't want it to be like a, just a cheap printed t-shirt. I want it to be something that I know that I put some care into and that's just, you know, you know, up to par. Not necessarily expensive for y'all, but just something that you know I didn't just slap together. And last but not least, the Life on Deck vlog, which has been around for a while. My wife and I's vlog, if you care about behind the scenes in my real life and kind of see more of a goofy side of me, then you definitely want to subscribe to that channel. I'll put a card up here and I'll link it down below. And we're going to start bringing those videos back very, very soon. So yeah, looking forward to that. Time for the real talk. Now, this is something I almost didn't even want to share with y'all because, you know, some things you just want to keep private and I'm not going to give you every single detail, obviously, but I think y'all deserve to know. And the only reason I'm sharing this is because I think it'll be a good thing as like a teachable moment, not only for y'all who may be watching, but like myself. So anyway, I went into the new year, 2021, with COVID-19. I caught it around Christmas Eve, my wife and I both. We got through it. Nothing went crazy extreme, which I'm very grateful for. We had the milder symptoms of like the flu stuff, but nothing else really extreme, which I'm very grateful for. But one thing it triggered for me was anxiety. I've never really had anxiety about my health. I'm not an anxious person, always been very ambitious ambitious, very confident, and I just don't really worry about many things, like ever. But this situation had me reflect because you think, okay, what if this goes left, right? What if what if you do actually ends up in the ICU? What if it doesn't go the best way possible? And then, you, you know, you just kind of look at things differently. I feel like that really shook me in a way I didn't think it would. More so than just that, and revealed to me that 2020 was a lot harder on me than I thought. In my particular situation, I was just burying all my emotions. I never really thought about it. I never dealt with a lot of the stuff. Y'all know I live downtown in LA and a lot of the social unrest in Los Angeles happened right here, like on my block. We see it right there. You step out in the street, the riots are happening right there in front of my apartment. Like it's right there. And that's one thing that I'd never talked about that I just kind of buried. As a husband, I got to protect my wife and certain things I had to do to make sure that happened. But I just kind of kept quiet about it and kept it pushing as I always do. On top of that, I've lost family this year uh, or last year. All that stuff just stacked on top of each other. I got this crazy anxiety about doing anything or going anywhere. It was just wild and I didn't know where it was coming from. So in the last month, it's just been really, really dark for me. I've been having to ask myself questions I never asked before, not being able to focus. Like I just don't feel like I have my light all the way. That twinkle in my eye. Like you might even notice some of that in this video watching it. If you know me, like I didn't have it in me a month ago, two weeks ago, even a week ago. I've been making a lot of progress and I'm gonna show you the, you know, the good that came out of this. But anyway, the good things that came out of this is not only me being more fit, going to the gym five to seven days a week, at least doing 30, 35 minutes of cardio. I eat clean, like vegetables and meat for the most part. I'm now 200 pounds down from 220. But again, I'm not in a rush. I'm taking it day by day, just focusing on the day at hand and, you know, just trying to get my spark back. And, and less about getting my spark back, but letting this experience helped me evolve into a better version of myself. As far as the inner work goes, because I told you about all the outer work, right? My working out, all that stuff, cool. But now I've been meditating a lot. I start my day off of meditation. I do about five to 10 minutes a day at least. I've been really getting deep into my scriptures. I'm a Christian, so I'm really just feeding myself things that I need to center myself and just kind of be very zen going into my day. This is all stuff that I thought was just like woo woo, like not me, you know? And I'm over here doing stretches now and meditating and <laughs> 
praying a lot more and all those things that I think are really important for overall balance, but I never prioritized it. Again, I'm still processing it. I don't have it all figured out. I don't have all the answers, but just know that I'm growing and I don't want to rob us the opportunity to grow together. That's a long rant. If you stay to the end, I appreciate it for hearing me out. Thank you so much for your time and I will see you on the next one. Peace.